Dr. Wang Xin, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Okay, thank you. Also, my pleasure to take the, uh, this interview. So we're going to be talk talking about economic development and, um, and trade, China's role in that, China's role in a, in a changing world. Maybe uh, we could start with talking a bit about how China, through its uh, Belt and Road Initiative and, and other ways, is going from a, a regional powerhouse to being a global actor in terms of trade and economic development. For China, um, right now, is the second largest economy in the world. And also, uh, his GDP and the for number one, mm -hmm. I mean, largest trade country in the world. Actually, the in early of this century, many of Chinese companies began to invest overseas. Mm -hmm. So the governments gave some policy uh, to support Chinese companies uh, going abroad to invest overseas. This, I think, is natural for a country like China, like the, the largest, one of the largest uh, economy in the world. I think it's very natural. Mm -hmm. And also, ch some countries, like uh, some developing countries, like Bangladesh, mm -hmm. uh, Cambodia, and some African countries, they just begin their industrialization. Mm -hmm. They need also some investment. Mm -hmm. Some foreign uh, Western countries, their technology, their equipment already, I mean, traditional way, they already moved to China to mm -hmm. some other countries. Mm -hmm. So right now, the China's uh, manufacturing uh, those technology equipment is very good for other developing countries. Mm -hmm. They also need this to solve the problem. China wants all the countries to concentrate on mm -hmm. infrastructures, uh, concentrate on uh, developing countries, they how to help them to improve their mm -hmm. life and how to have them, uh, how, to, how to say, get, now getting rich, get getting uh, well beings, yeah. a better basic well beings. Yeah. Absolutely. With that, uh, we've seen Chinese multinationals like like Huawei, for example, that have encountered a lot of difficulty in the markets, especially in countries like America, regulatory difficulties, governments uh, perceiving Chinese companies in some cases as a threat. How do you believe Chinese companies have been dealing with this so far? How could they deal with it differently, maybe? Um, Huawei, everybody knows Huawei now very yeah. well, so uh, it's a very special company also in mm -hmm. China, very, very special. It's not a public company. Mm -hmm. It's not state-owned. Yeah, but very huge, very big one. Uh, it's really, uh, really new for Americans mm -hmm. because suddenly they have a Chinese companies. Yeah, yeah. Before in the past ten years, they had a competitor of uh, Cisco in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But now Cisco already far behind of Huawei. Yeah, uh, Huawei now probably right now you can say number one telecommunications company in the world. Mm -hmm. So Huawei have many research centers in, uh, in the world, in Europe, in US, mm -hmm. in China, also in other countries. So Huawei has the uh, 5G products, have technology also has his today. Mm -hmm. It's natural, it's yeah. also natural sense. But for the Americans, a little bit surprise. Yeah. Yeah, a big surprise. If Huawei is a European country, probably mm -hmm. more acceptable. But for the Chinese company, it's uh, difficult for, for the mm -hmm. Americans to accept. But for Huawei and also for other Chinese companies, they also need to, to know how to deal with mm -hmm. these new situations. Yeah. What do you think of, uh, of the current trade relationship between uh, China and America? How could, it be, how could it be better? Everybody hopes the whole the world trade come back to normal. And also the trade war is not good for U.S. and not good for China too. Mm -hmm. But trade war also push China to open its door yeah. faster than before or, or wider than before. Mm -hmm. So it's good for China also for good China, for the Chinese companies. Mm -hmm. But I hope just uh, the two countries just stop from the trade war, yeah. not go further to ideology. Mm -hmm. to security issues, also other problems. Mm -hmm. If they come to a comprehensive conflicts, competitors in mm -hmm. many aspects, 
the situation is very difficult to deal with, mm -hmm. just for the trade. Yeah. You can say, people can sit down to talk about, like a business, people they can talk. Mm -hmm. But for ideology or some other political things, it's hard to, to make the deal. Yeah. We were talking about China's role in a global trading environment. More generally, as China is now becoming, what well, has become a world power, but has only started to exercise that power as a foreign policy actor, what do you think China's direction should be, or what do you think it will be, in terms of its interactions with the rest of the world? Uh, what, what is a Chinese vision for the world compared to an American vision, say, for example? Uh, uh, Chinese foreign policy has changed a little bit from previous, from mid-present Hu period of time. Mm -hmm. Right now, a little bit uh, a more, uh, American saying, probably more aggressive. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if take China like the second largest company, uh, economy, probably think it's not so, so strong. Actually, China is not so strong. Mm -hmm. Not like Russia in Middle East, you can mm -hmm. see. We just have some uh, our voices. But uh, our voices sometimes is not so strong it, too. It's just, we just express ourselves, but never has exactly the actions to follow the voices. Mm -hmm. Americans always, actions and the voices, they are always uh, been to, uh, together, but for China always say something, they not do so much. Mm -hmm. Chinese way, they always think, you, you want to solve the problem, you have to find a reason. Mm. Find a reason then to solve the, the roots of the problem, mm. not just the problem itself. Mm. So for Middle East, for the uh, terrorists, for some other uh, things like Africa, we believe the economy is the, the reason. Mm. Pe people's lives, they are too poor. They don't yeah. have jobs, no education. They know, cannot see the hope of the future. So they just, you know, the young people just try to do something. Mm. If the local economy have enough jobs for the young people, then the government have more money to invest to education. Mm -hmm. Probably be fewer and fewer people will do something bad for the world. Mm -hmm. For the whole world, is, uh, I think peace is uh, a peace is everybody needs. That's a great message to end on. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, Dr. Wong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.